Greetings everyone, it's your guy, the Urban Window Farmer. Today I'm going to be unboxing the Spider Farmer SF1000 LED grow light with dimmer knob. I picked this product up on, actually I picked it up on Amazon, but you can get it cheaper on the Spider Farmer website for $159.99. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be unboxing this uh, grow light and once I get it unboxed, the next thing I'm going to do is actually set it up and actually start the grow process. So here we are. This is how the package came in in the mail. Um, it's packaged pretty nicely. You see here, discarding the first box. And then you see the instruction manuals there on the top. Spider Farmer, pretty detailed instructions. And you can see that there's styrofoam um, kind of protecting the lights. Very nice packaging, I would have to say. Okay, so you can see um, this nice compact grow light system. Uh, this is my first Spider Farmer grow light, so I'm curious how this thing is going to work. It just it feels very sturdy, um, a metal construction. I've had grow lights before. Um, but this one, it feels a little bit more premium, I have to say. Alright, let me get this um, moved up. So you can see there in the middle, that is the mean well driver for the unit. And it comes with, of course, a power cord and the metal hanger kits as well, which are in this bag here. And there's also an RJ45 cable in the bag there. And that's if you had multiple lights and you wanted them to work in tandem with each other. Like if you wanted to dim the lights and have them all dimmed together, uh, you would pair those multiple lights together using the RJ45 cable. All right, so I'm gonna start connecting the metal hangers. So there's four slots that I have to connect the metal hangers to. Uh, they're in each corner of the of the unit. So I'm going to quickly do that. And I'm setting up this um, Spider Farmer LED light uh, here on a bookshelf and I'm just going to use this bookshelf to start my seedlings. And then once the seedlings are at an appropriate size, um, mature enough, that I'll, I'll add them to my Martian Tower garden. So I think this is a way that I'll have uh, much healthier plants instead of starting the uh, plants from seed in the Martian Tower garden. All right, so I'm all done. I have the SF1000 Grow Light all hung up. Um, you can kind of see how I did it. Okay, those, that's both sides. You can see how the system is set up. And uh, those are the two channels. Um, if you were to have an RJ45 cable and you have multiple lights, you would hook those into the, those two channels. You have your on and off switch, and then you have your dimmable knob on the very right. So, um, I kind of messed around with the height a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to go with this this height, and then I'm going to um, put my plants under here and, and, see, and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, let you guys see it. Uh, you can see those Samsung diodes, and you can it's uh, dimmable, so you can crank it all the way up to 100, uh, depending on the stage of your plants. Um, usually in the um, germination phase you're at 20 to 40 percent, seedling phase at 40 to 60, vegetative phase you're at 60 to 90, and then flowering phase you're at 90 to 100 percent. One more thing I have to mention, um, the lights are, are silent, I don't really hear anything when I turn them on. Um, so I've had grow lights before that are they have a kind of a, a fan and a, a humming noise, but this, th these are pretty silent. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, with my seedlings. So I 3D printed uh, this Rapid Rooter seedling holder. 
I used um, you know the fastest print setting so you can see the print is not you know the most beautiful 3d print that I've ever done um, I just wanted to get something out there as fast as possible so I printed this and you see the the um, rapid router seedling um, plugs they fit pretty they, they fit nicely into this system uh, I don't have to worry about them tipping over so I can fit 15 um, seedlings in here uh, so for for this um, phase I'm, I'm just going to put a, a few varieties of lettuce and then see what happens All right, so I'm going to start putting seeds in. Um, I'm going to start from the right to the left. I have my stick. I like to dip it in water just so that the seed will stick to the stick. Um, so the first plant that I'm going to be putting in is the green wave mustard plant. So I'm going to do three of each. And I'm putting I'm putting about like two seeds in each of the rapid rooter plant starters, and if more than one germinate, I'll try my best to um, first I'll pick the one that looks like it's doing the best. I'll, I'll let that stay in in place, and then I'll I'll pull the other one out and try my best to replant it in another rapid rooter plant starter. Okay, so all done with the green wave mustard. I'll move on to the mustard green red giant. As you can see, the seeds are extremely small. And that's another reason why I'm using this stick because um, it's a little bit hard for me to grab a hold of those little seeds and place them in the rapid rooter um, holes so continue on putting approximately about two seeds in each I look like I have three right there but um, approximately two seeds in each of the plugs One more to go. And next is the red velvet lettuce plant. These seeds look a, look a lot different than the other two. But they're also extremely small, so Again, I'll be using the stick to place them into the rapid rooter plugs. All right, next is the Swiss chard. And these seeds are a good size, so I don't need to use the stick. And I'm only going to place in one seed because they take up so much space. So That's quick. 
put the rest of the seeds back and then uh, the last but not least is the uh, Paris Island romaine lettuce so these seeds look pretty similar to the red velvet lettuce seeds I was trying to grab it without using any water because I didn't want to get all the seeds wet and then when I put it back in the package um, I don't want to spoil the seeds but I ended up having to use water anyway so again about two seeds per pod and if we have additional germination, I'll just um, move the, the additional plant to another pod. And I think we're all good to go there. So I'll just put the rest of the seeds back. All right, so next step is to move the tray over uh, back to my bookshelf under the grow lights. All right, so the seedling tray is ready to go. Next step, I'm just gonna adjust the, the lighting um, for the germination phase. And just let it sit here. Uh, I'm going to leave the lights on for about 18 hours a day and I'm going to check back in about five days and here we are five days later uh, the plants have started to all germinate um, everything except for the Swiss char has germinated uh, Swiss char takes a bit longer but uh, have a look and what I'm doing here is just trying to carefully pull out the additional plant. I only want to have one plant in one pod. So if there's um, an extra one of uh, two germinated, I try to pull out the additional one and put that one in its own pod. So sometimes I have to break open the rapid rooter pod because they're not really made for putting uh, already germinated plants in, into them. They're mostly made for putting seeds. So that's the process that I typically take. All right, so now we're about 10 days in. You can see everything is pretty much germinated. Uh, except for one of the Swiss chart hasn't germinated, but everything else has. I am watering the plant. Uh, I also added a little bit of nutrients um, just to aid in the development of the plants. Okay, this is 15 days in. Have a look. You can see I put some new plants in around the edges um, so some of the plants aren't in the grow tray because I added a couple more. And this is two days later. So most of these plants are now large enough to go into the Martian Tower Garden. So I'm going to take the majority of these this weekend and I'm going to put them in the Martian Tower Garden and then I'm going to uh, there's a few plants around the edges that are kind of being uh, shadowed out because of the other plants are so big. So I'm gonna so they'll have space to um, to grow as well. So that'll be my project this this weekend, um, placing these into the Martian Tower Garden. So have a look. Um, I would say this was a pretty good experiment using the Spider Farmer LED lights. 
to start my lettuce plants. And if you enjoyed this kind of content, please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to be doing more videos like this um, using the Spider Farmer LED lights to grow other plants as well. And also, you'll probably want to see me adding these plants to the Martian Tower Garden this weekend. So there'll be another video about that. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.